Jesus. Hallelujah. Brethren, I welcome you to the fellowship this evening. We are going to continue from where we stopped on Friday. And uh, last Friday, we were looking at uh, the prophet. So what I'm going to do this to Balak, the king of uh, Moab, was the one who had employed Balaam to curse the children of Israel. He set out to do so, but it didn't work. Eventually, King Balak got totally fed up with uh, Prophet Balaam that uh, he decided to sack him. If you turn your Bibles to Numbers 24, you will catch the conversation between Balak, the king, and Balaam, the hireling prophet. In Numbers 24, Numbers 24, we want to read from verse 10. I hope you are there. Numbers 24. Let's read from verse 10. And Balak's anger was kindled against Balaam. That's the king against the prophet. And he smote his hands together. And Balak said unto Balaam, I called thee to curse my enemies. And behold, thou hast altogether blessed them these three times. Verse 11, therefore, now flee thou to thy place. No, get out of my sight. I thought to, pro to promote thee unto great honor. But lo, the Lord has kept thee back from honor. He's so angry. All that he promised uh, Balaam, he said, I won't give them to you. Just get out of my sight. And Balaam, in verses 12 and 13, Try to explain to the king what I told you when you sent your people. I can do nothing except as I received from the Lord. So they're trying to blame me there for. But for verse 14, we'll read. And now, this is Balaam. He's going to the prophecy now. And now, behold, I, that is Balaam, I go unto my people. Come therefore, and I will advertise thee <coughs> what these people, meaning the Israelites, what these people shall do, shall, future, shall do to thy people when in the latter days. Latter days meaning this end time in which you and I are living today. And Balaam was speaking in BC 1452. Almost, almost 1,500 years before Christ. That's when he was speaking of today, 2021. He was speaking in BC 1452. And it's, that prophecy is concerning this our own time. And then from verse 17, he gave the prophecy. Verse 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob, who is Jacob, Israel. And a scepter, who holds a scepter, a king. And the scepter shall rise out of Israel and shall smite the corners of Moab, that is the land of that Balak, says in the latter days, 
you were asking me to cause this people. But in later days, God is going to use this people to destroy your land more. And destroy all the children. And of another one for Shem. Okay, one of, three, one of the three sons of Noah. And Shem. progenitor of people in the Middle East area, all this Arabian Peninsula, including Israel. They all descended from Shem, Abraham inclusive. 18, and Edom, Edom is the place we call Jordan today, the kingdom of Jordan today. Edom shall be a possession. In other words, Israel shall conquer them and possess them. Seah also, Seah is also part of Edom. The mountainous area of Edom, that is Jordan today, the mountainous area of Edom is what is called Seah. So in other words, Edom and Seah are actually the same thing. But when you get to look at the mountainous area of that of Edom, that's the area called Seah. And of course, the Bible says Esau is Edom. Mm -hmm. Edom shall be a possession, she also shall be a possession for his enemies. And the most important of all that Balaam says is the next sentence Israel shall do valiantly. In other words, Israel shall be a conquering lion. Nobody shall defeat it, it shall devour all the people who go to attack. Uh, 19 Out of Jacob, out of Israel, shall come he that shall have dominion. That is clear to you. Israel will have dominion over all these areas. And when he looked on, to verse 20, when he looked on Amalek, Amalek is an area bordering the Sinai deserts today, just in Egypt. It's just by the side of Egypt. That's what called that's where the land of Amalek. Amalek was the first. So when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said. Amalek was the first of the nations, that is the first of the nations that warred against Israel. That's the meaning of that. The first of the nations. It means was the first of nations that warred against Israel when Israel was coming to take possession of the promised land. And that's why God said, I will never forgive Amalek. Everything must be wiped out. And then Saul went and tried to play his wayu from where we got that expression of what we use today. Obedience is better than sacrifice. I'm sure all of you remember the story. But his later end shall be that he perish forever. Okay. And then the uh, And then he took up, where, where am I? And he looked, 21, he looked on the Kenites and took up his parable and said, Strong is thy dwelling place, and thou puttest thy nest in a rock. Never, nevertheless, 22, the Kenites shall be wasted, or the ashes shall carry the root captive. These Kenite people, that area, is east of the Dead Sea in the West Bank in, in Judea. That area today is part of what you call the West Bank today. I you know what you call West Bank today in Bible times called Judea and Samaria. So the Kenites were people in the east side of the Dead Sea and the West Bank today. 
Actually, they were descendants of the Midianites. The Midianites were the, the um, in-laws of Moses. So the, Can the Canaanites, they were descended from there, but now they found their own place in a very formidable fortress. That's why they thought they were very formidable. But Asher, which means Assyrians, that's the upper part of uh, in Iraq, upper Tigris area of Iraq. That's what is called Asher. They still went there and they finished there. 23, listen, and here we end on Balaam. And he took on his parable and said, Alas, who shall be alive when God doeth this? In other words, all these things, all these prophecies that Balaam was giving, he's saying it is God that will do the fighting for Israel. And that's why Israel will have to do valiantly. But remember, this thing was given almost 1,500 years before Christ came. And from Christ, from Christ to now, how many years? About 2,000. So we are talking about almost 3,500 years. And this prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. And Balaam said, it is for the latter days. Is there anywhere you have read in history where Israel has attacked all these areas to the point of taking possession of them? The answer is no. But if God has allowed you to be put in his word, it means that it must happen. That is what this matter is. It must come to pass. And it's going to come to pass in the latter days, as we saw it here. What this woman shall do to thy people in the latter days, verse 14. This is the hour in which we are now. So let's move forward today. That was just to remind us of what we had done on Friday. Today, we want to go back to the scripture with which we started this teaching. That is Psalm 83. Please go to Psalm 83. We'll, we'll take it from verse 1 to verse 18. Again, you know that this Psalm 2 this subject that I on my own, the term of the Torah Reclamation WTR, please, I said to you, now me talk like that, you know, go talk to outside. Mm -hmm. But just for you to understand, you can see that this, all of this is something that has been prophesied over 3,000 years ago. That they will happen in this time that you and I are living. Therefore, as we go through our daily lives, as we watch listen to the news, internet, let us always bear in mind that something is fixing to happen. And so let's be prepared. So, 83. Psalm 83, from verse 1. Keep not thou silence, O God. Hold not thy peace. And be not still, O oh God. That's the prophet prophesying there. Verse 2. For lo, thine 
enemies make a tumult, but they make wahala. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. So remember, this is prophecy. And uh, this prophecy, this prophecy, it is coming by pitting God against, pitting God, uh, God against Israel's enemies. So this prophecy kind of put Israel out of the conflict and making that it is God and this enemy put the battle. So put that at the back of your mind. So that enemies have make a tumult and they that hate thee have been turned up their head. Now these enemies, they actually hate God. Three, see their game plan now in verse three. They have taken crafty counsel, crafty counsel against thy people. Who are the God's people? Israel and consulted against thy hidden ones. Who are the hidden ones? Israel. What is, what, what, what did the prophet here say, hidden ones? Because God is the protector of Israel. So in God, Israel is hidden. That is the meaning of that, okay? Verse four. They have said these enemies of God actually enemies of Israel. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Mm -hmm. The game plan is, let's destroy Israel so it will never be a nation. Remember, this is as far back as about a thousand years before Christ. This enmity has been there even as at that time, over about a thousand years before Christ. That enmity is still there today. 3,000 years later, it is still there. Let us call them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more re in maybe no more in remembrance. So the idea is Israel should be completely, yes, wiped out. It should not have, there will be no, if no place called Israel again, nobody will ever remember that Israel ever existed. 3,000 years ago, this state of enmity was there between Israel and these nations around her, who are all descendants of Abraham, just as Israel also is. This is Posterity of Abraham. And but for what Sarah did, convincing Abraham to take her maid, this enmity will not have been there. Those who are still angry with what we preach by telling them no woman should come behind the pulpit. I hope they are taking notes. Eve did it in the garden, brought Adam down, and as a result, brought all of us down. Original sin entered into the world. Now, God has called Abraham, and again, his own wife, brought a scheme that's contrary to God's scheme. That's what Eve did. That's what Sarah did. And if you remember in memory, when God in the theophany came down and met with uh, Abraham, I was telling Abraham that 
by this time next year, your wife will, will have a child. The woman was in the tent and she laughed. She laughed, God was gone. Hmm. Can you imagine that man in the tent I have a child? Doesn't he know how advanced I am in this? And God was peeved. He was peeved. That's why he asked. He said, why did Sarah laugh? She must have known that that's God with her husband in the Theophany. And I got Caesar. So it was as at that time in memory, Sarah has still not regretted what she did. Remember after that two man gave birth to that child, she had boasted before and said, don't worry. The woman gave his mind. I'm now on equal footing with you. I am co wife, as this woman doing African magic, as they always say. I'm co wife. If you don't take time, second one will come. Sarah became angry and said to Abraham, send her away. I insist. And Abraham was reluctant. I'm not the one saying so. The Bible says so. Go and read the Bible. Abraham was reluctant to send the woman away. Uh, God stepped in and said to Abraham, do as your wife said. Send the woman Away. Why am I telling you this? This is that I'm saying the woman away had already happened before God came down in the Theophan to meet with Abraham in Mamre. Yet, as at that time, and God said, She will still have a child. Sarah will have a child. She was still in unbelief and would not accept what God said there. And just laugh, laughed it off. We may go to ask to Abraham to say to her, why did Sarah laugh? So you just have to understand what we are what we are dealing with. In this time, Nepal has struck, so please bear with me. I'm trying to find an alternative power now. Okay. All right. So, these two people now, because of the, what happened, that issue of Ishmael is what has brought enmity into the family of Abraham. That enmity, since that time, has continued to today. And to make matters worse, a religion now started, which now adopted Ishmael as God's as God's gift to Abraham as seed, so where Abraham's posterity will be counted. And here I'm talking about Islam. So you can see where the problem started from. I've now built up to serious total enmity that these other people, only one thing will satisfy them, and that is total destruction of Israel. Till this day, they are still saying it. It is still in the secret uh, understanding of some of the countries, in some others, it's still in the open their constitution, their rules, everything. Israel must be driven into the sea. 
So, Psalm 83 is drawing our attention to this and asking God to come in. Verse 5, for they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederates against thee. In other words, they ganged up against you, God, by way of their ganging up against Israel. Then verse 6 begins to mention them. This is where it becomes interesting. Remember, the names are written here that the names of those people in the Bible days. What we are going to do now is to give you their names in today's real world in which you are now living. The tabernacles of Edom. This is today's kingdom of Jordan. Please. That map. We'll soon see the map on the screen again. The Edom is naming them now. What are you? I'm talking about map. Edom, that of course, Edom is Esau, not this. Let me see if I can get it. No. The normal one. Okay. So, you can see now. This is the Hashemite kingdom of Jordan. The rulers in Jordan and the rulers in Saudi Arabia, they are the same family. It was when Britain, usually perfidious Albion that they are called in history, the deal is made with uh, the Hashemites to give them this place. When they discover something else that the king, that South promised them, then they change them by themselves. Then they changed, gave the land to Saud. That became Saudi Arabia. All this land you see here, Britain had given it to Israel. So we Britain under Churchill did not do what they did. The land of Israel today would have been like this. That's what it should have been. So to pacify the Hashemites, who are the same as these people, they cut off this area from Israel and then give Israel only this small land and they give it to Jordan. So Edom is in Jordan. Okay? All right. Verse 6, verse 6, verse six the tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites, those are the descendants of Ishmael. So they are, Arabia is their own area. The Ishmaelites are from Arabia. Then the Hagarins, Hagarins and Ishmaelites are just the same thing. That is the movement. The The Ishmaelites and Hagarins are the same thing. The Hagarins there, that is telling you about Hagar, the mother of Ishmael. Just leave it. This is Saudi Arabia. So Ishmael, the Ishmaelites, the Hagarins, they are all from the area you call Saudi Arabia today. Okay. 
Gabal. This place you see here that is called Geba, we cannot find it in the, it's an ancient city. This map does not show it. Anyway, Geba is in Lebanon. This is Lebanon here. Geba is in Lebanon. Today, what you call uh, Geba is called Biblos. Biblos today in, that's what it's called. It's about 20 miles, 20 miles north of uh, the Lebanese capital. You can see Gabba here now. That's the place. It is in Lebanon. Okay. Then uh, what's the next one? Amon. Amon is in Jordan. This is Jordan. You can see Amon here. You can see Edom here. You can see Moab here. Okay. So you can see that this, this is all Jordan, all right? Okay. Remember that Hagar was from Egypt. Always remember that. So when you talk about Hagarins, you are look, you are seeing looking at the connection with Egypt as well as Arabia. Arabia in the sense that Hagar was the mother of Ishmael, the progenitor of the Arabs. And she's also, she was also Egyptian. All right. You can see Amalek we're talking about. You can see the Sinai, the Sinai here. Just as I told you earlier, okay? This is the correct map. Uh, then Philistines. The Philistines occupy this area on the border of the Mediterranean Sea, just by the sea coast here, not up to here, just around here. The sea coast here. That is the place of the Philistines. Let me quickly tell you something. The Philistines. Oh, this is the, the Philistines are not today's Palestinians. That is what the Arabs and the world politicians who have no idea of what the Bible is saying, that's what they keep saying. It is just not true. The Philistines of the Bible are not Palestinians. And I will tell you the difference, very simple. Palestinians are Arabs. Those who call Palestinians today, they are Arabs. I think it was on Friday, last Friday, that I talked to you about Emperor Hadrian of Rome, who was a terrible hater of the Jews. And when there was a rebellion, Around AD 132, led by a guy called uh, Simon Bakokba. And he attacked a legion of, Rus of the Roman army and just finished them. He played into the hands of this Emperor Hadrian in Rome. Hadrian was a very capable administrator, no question. So he seized that opportunity. And he said, what General Titus did not finish in AD 70 when he destroyed Jerusalem and uh, Jerusalem and uh, the temple, that he will finish it. So 
you know, when Titus destroyed Jerusalem and uh, the temple, he actually plowed the land there. He plowed the land there with salt so that nothing will ever grow in, in, in Israel. And I see that kind of, thank you. You can, you can see that kind of uh, wickedness. So as I was telling you, I'll come let me finish, keep it. So you see, when that Bakogba had his rebellion, that one used the opportunity and they attacked Israel. That was when he changed the name Judea and Samaria, he changed it to Syria, Palestina. That is how the name Palestine came into being. It's not that there was a people called Palestinians, no. The man just wanted to wipe out everything that is Jewish. He banned the religion of the Jews, Judaism, he banned it. His own, his own demon god, he put it on the Temple Mount. And then he changed the name of Jerusalem to Alia Capitolina, which is a combination of his first name and the name of his, his own god. But God did not allow that name to stick. But for reasons best known to God, he allowed the name Palestine to hold. When you think about it, to you ask yourself, why didn't Allah, excuse me, why didn't God allow Jerusalem to stick, but allow Palestine to stick? If God did not allow the Palestine to, the Syria Palestine to stick, would we be discussing this matter today? This is what you understand. Everything I see happens, God is inside of it all just to make sure that his word will come to pass. This is what this matter is all about. And you can see it there. So the Palestinians that we talk about today, they are Arabs. They were never in the land of Israel, even this small place which they call Israel today. There was nothing like Arab in that land, never. It was during the period that Israel was sacked from that land that neighboring Arabs, Arabs from the neighboring areas, started coming to that place. It was empty. That's how they started coming there. And some will not stay. Then they will go. There was nobody claiming the place. In accordance with God's word, while Israel was out there, God made sure that that land would never support anybody. So after the Jews started being harassed everywhere in the world, they started trying to, they started coming back bit by bit. And they were finding these Arabs who would come there for some time ago, and those said, you want to buy land? And this said, the Jews said, yeah, we'll, we'll buy. So they were selling. And they were going to laughing at the back, saying, oh, these are really foolish people. This land that is useless, nothing is growing there. And they are paying us money, no problem. So everybody was coming back. You, I'm, I'm, Arab, I'm, I, I'm here. You want to say? What? So that is exactly what they were doing. Arabs are not Palestinians. Are not Arabs. Palestinians are from Shem. Abraham was from Shem. Abraham was the father of Arabs, the father of Israel. So both Arabs and Israel shared that same posterity of Abraham, and that's Shem. Philistines are related to us. They are descendants of Ham. We in Africa, we are descended from Ham. So I don't have time for it. You go to uh, Genesis 10 later and read for yourself. Read the generations of Ham. You will see it there. So how can Philistines be Palestinians? 
But because people don't know these things, and now they are deciding in things to United Nations based on ignorance, thinking that the Philistines of old were the Palestinians of today and trying to say, but this is their land. They were there before now. Israel, why are you trying to send them away? That's why they start saying Gaza area, which was where the Philistines were. That's why they're saying Gaza must be given to the Palestinians because they think Philistines and Palestinians that is just a change of nomenclature, of name. It is just not true. That's why God has given us this Bible. All right. So which is the next one? Ta. Ta is a place in Lebanon. You can see there. Many people today don't even know when we are talking about the matter of Israel. They can't link it with Lebanon. It's not in their minds. They can't link it with Syria. There's so much ignorance in the churches. In how many churches today do they pray for Israel? Are Christian churches not at the helm of people who are criticizing Israel, saying that they are wicked towards the Palestinians and that they should divide the land? What does it matter? Certainly, Roman Catholic Church does not see that Israel land as for the Jews. It doesn't, it doesn't accept it. Vatican was one of the last countries to establish diplomatic relations with Israel. And that was just about two decades ago. If it has even got up to that yet. Up to this moment, I'm talking to you, Vatican does not accept that Jerusalem should belong to Israel. I mean, up to today, what's today's date? Fifth of uh, May, 2021, Catholic Church does not accept that Jerusalem belongs to Israel. Whether it's saying we are going to make it an international city, doesn't belong to anybody. Is that what is in the Bible? Did God not make it very clear that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel? So how can any church see what is so clearly written from all the Old Testament to New Testament? And then the church says, no, it is not so. And then you want to say that that church is Christian? And Mark is not just Catholic Church alone. The Anglican Church is exactly the same. Methodists, Baptists, all of them. So when we're talking on Sunday, we shall continue this Sunday by God's grace, if the rapture does not come by that time, talking about the Lamb's Book of Life and the Book of Life, Listen very carefully so that you know where you belong. So you know where the church, where you are attending. You know where they belong concerning the word of, word of God. That's why we are teaching these things. You cannot go contrary to one word of God and then you are thinking that you have a place in the rapture. No, you don't. You don't even have a place among the foolish virgins who will come up in the second resurrection. No, you don't. You are just going to end up in the country of the reprobates. Your name will be neither in the last book of life or in the book of life. You are the one the Bible was talking about and the books were open and another book was open. Let's be very clear about these things. God is not hiding things from us. He has given us the Holy Ghost to teach us in this time. That's why he gave us the prophet messenger for this age, that we will know what God is talking about. And then when we know, we go and teach others. But nobody wants to listen. May God help us so that we listen in Jesus' name. Amen. Asher, I think that's next one, verse 8. Mm. Asher, well, that is just... Uh, Syria, but more especially Iraq, is mainly, it's, uh, it's partly Syria, but in the main is Iraq, lower part of Syria, and then 
entering to the Rapids in the upper Tigris area. That river Tigris, yes. Thank you. You can see that area. Mm -hmm. So you can so you can see Syria this side. So a Syria of old takes a part of Syria and the rest of it belongs to what you call Iraq today. All right, so, and then they have helped the children of Lot. Lot, the children of Lot were Ammon and Moab. I'm sure all of you know Genesis chapter nine story concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know what happened to Lot when the children got him drunk and each one of them took tongues to sleep with him, the two daughters. The first one made him drunk one night, then slept with him, she became pregnant. The next night, the other one made him drunk, slept with him, she got drunk. So the children from that, from such uh, liaison, they were the ones who from Ammon and Moab. And they're the same place today we call Jordan. Incidentally, what is the capital of Jordan today? A man, a man, this Bible does not lie. Okay. Then verse nine, do unto them as unto the Midianites, as to Sisera, as to Jabin, at the book of Kishon, which perished at Endor. They became as dung for the earth. Made their nobles like Oreb and like Zeb, Yea, all their princes as Ziba and as Lamuna. All of you who read the Bible, go to the book of Judges. You will see this story here concerning Gideon, concerning Barak, and to a little extent concerning that woman. What's her name? Okay. Um, sir? Um, in the judge. Okay. Huh? Deborah. Deborah. So all these places mentioned here is how God used Gideon in particular and Balak as well to destroy all these powerful kings. So this prophet of Psalm 83 is saying to God, fight for us and do to them as you use these people to destroy all these heavy kings. Sisera, Oreb, Zeb, Ziba, Zamuna. We don't have time to do that. Just go and read Judges 4, Judges 7, Judges 8. You will see all of that there. You that, you do, that you do that as your homework because we are, we, are, we are rushing for time. Okay. Verse 12. Who said, let us take to ourselves the houses of God in possession. Those people that God use this to, 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 to finish, they also had the same idea what they would do to Israel. And then God fought against them using this people of Israel. Verse 13. Oh my God, make them like a wind as the stubble before the wind. You may not understand it, the wind here it's a kind of a large broad wheel that is used on the threshing floor. They roll it over the grain that's on the threshing floor to, to help to thresh it, you know, to thresh the wheat. And this is done in the open. So when that is done, they bring shovel, carry that in and throw it in the air and the staff will go away and the wheat will remain behind. So that's, you see, finish them like that. So there will be nothing of them left there. Number 14, verse 14. As the fire burned a wood, and as the flame set, set the mountains on fire, say so God deal with them that way. The interesting thing is where we are going to now, 15 to 18. So persecute them with thy tempest, and make them afraid with thy storm. They are crying to God, deal with all these nations. 16. 
fill their faces with shame that they may see that they may seek thy name, O Lord. Finish them off that they will say, yeah, this God that can do this, I beg, will rather will serve you. Don't worry. Let them be confounded and troubled forever. Yeah, let them be put See, this one is number, and it still has zero, zero at the back. Let them be confounded. Yeah, let them be put to shame and perish. Verse 18. That man may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, are the most high over all the earth. So the bottom line, by the time you finish with all these nations, nobody will be saying, who is your God? The way that you are going at that God. Now, in the next few minutes, I want us to see something concerning this verse 18. That man may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, are the most high over all the earth. You may not realize it. All this we are highlighting in the earth today is mainly about Islam, Christianity. All these other words, they are not many. Confucianism, uh, Voodooism, what is those Japanese? Hinduism, Buddhism, they are not in Bethlehem. It's talking about mainly Christianity along with Judaism and Islam. What is the trouble today in this world? We may deceive ourselves as much as we like, but the truth is, all this will have like going up everywhere. You can summarize it in one sentence. Who is God? Jehovah by Christ or Allah? That is all. All the other things we are talking about the story. We want to settle that question. Who really is God? And when we are talking about God, what we are talking about? We are talking about creator. If you are Yoruba, you talk about um, Ogun. You know your that Ogun did not create anything. And you are quite happy with that because you know it's just a small G. If you are Ibu, say, you talk about Amadion. You know that Mario has never created anything. You say it's like uh, a messenger of the, of, the, of, 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 of the real God. Well, the question remains today, who is this real God? Is it what the Judeo-Christians are talking about, Jehovah? Or is it Allah? This is the thing. Now, I want to show you something and then we close. Verse 18 says that men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, whose name alone, whose name alone is Jehovah, you are the most high over all the earth. Therefore, come quickly with me to Isaiah 19. We are going to close there. Isaiah 19, we shall look at a few, a few scriptures from there. Isaiah 19, verse 1. Isaiah 19, verse 1. I read, The burden of Egypt. That simply means a prophecy concerning the fall of Egypt or God's oracle against Egypt. That's not the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord rided upon a swift cloud. Hey, the Lord rided upon a swift cloud. The Lord there, you know, therefore, when you need to talk in that way, you know, we are talking about the Lord of hosts, Jehovah Sabbath. The Lord mighty in battle. 
That's what we are talking about here now. The body of Egypt, Isaiah 19, verse 1. The, the Lord rided upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. Now, this one I'm going to. And the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. To what will be moved? At the Lord of all's presence, the idols. And the heart of Egypt shall melt in the midst of it. He says, the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence. The idols of Egypt. Let us now take that word idol. What does it mean? Psalm 96. Psalm 96. You want to read just one verse. Or two verses. Verses 4 to 5. Psalm 96. Verses 4 to 5. Psalm 96, 4 to 5. Verse 4, for the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. Who is the Lord we are talking about here? Jehovah. Verse 5, for all the gods of the nations are idols. So if you are not Jehovah, Whatever God they call you, you are, as far as God is concerned, what? An idol. Opari. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Why did the Bible say so? Say, this God, the one that made the heavens, the one that created, he alone is God, and any other one you call God is an I don't. Nothing to discuss. It is settled like that. So let us look at First Chronicles. It's confirming the same thing. First Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter sixteen, verse twenty-six. First Chronicles, sixteen, twenty-six. First Chronicles, sixteen, twenty-six. First Chronicles sixteen twenty six. First Chronicles sixteen twenty six says, "For all the gods of the people are idols." So whatever you call your god, as far as this Bible is concerned, and as far as Jehovah God is concerned, they are all idols. Whatever the book you are using, whether you call it Allah, you call it Hindu. You call it confusion, so you call it Hindu. They are idols. End of story. But the Lord made the heavens. Okay, let's look at Zephaniah. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 11. Zephaniah, towards the end of Old Testament. Zephaniah is after Habakkuk. Zephaniah is after Habakkuk and is before he died. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 11. Zephaniah 2, 11 says, The Lord will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. This Lord, whose name is Jehovah, said, he will be terrible unto them, for he will famish all the gods of the earth. And men shall worship him, everyone from his place, even all the isles of the Hebrew. Even isles of the Hebrew, that's talking about as far away as America. Because that Bible is concerned, all those years we call America to be 
He rubs with them as far as the islands and is hidden land, Gentile land. You see it? Now, let us conclude with the last one. Isaiah 42, verse 5. Isaiah 42, verse 5. That's the last scripture we close. Isaiah 42, verse 5. Says, Thus said God, the Lord, He that created the heavens. You see, this God we are talking about, that Psalm 83 was talking about, that they may know that their name alone is Jehovah. He is the one that created the heavens and stretched them out. He that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it. He that giveth breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk the area. Let's see again. Thus said God the Lord, He that created the heavens, and stretch the heavens out. He that spread forth the earth, that he created the earth too, and that which cometh out of it, out of the earth. He that giveth breath unto the people upon the earth, that is, he gave them soul, and spirit to them that walk down. Talking about man, he gave man spirit, he gave man soul. That is he who is God, that is the Lord. So you can see that what we are talking about today, about Psalm 83, at the end of it, say God fight for us, subjugate discipline, and they will serve you. If not, we'll tarry and we'll meet on Friday. Then you begin to see how God carried out this prayer of Psalm 83. We will now be talking about individual countries. We read from Isaiah 19 today, Isaiah 19 today but we took only verse 1. It's because of time. Friday, it will be will have enough time to go into that and you'll be amazed what God is going to teach us there. We shall go to other places like that, country by country, and you will see what God is going to do to them in this later day that you and I are living in. God will certainly do something. May we understand when things begin to happen on earth that this is the hand of God of creature. And therefore, we will have understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm taking almost 10 minutes of your time. I apologize for it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you for guiding us together one more time. We thank you for teaching us your word. We are grateful and thankful to you, oh God, for what you have done to do. And your word that has come to us, oh God, May your spirit, even tonight, give us greater revelation of what your spirit has spoken to us, your children, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give us understanding, God, because we want to know, we want to know you better. We surrender to you that you may use us to spread your word before others. Father God, there is so much that the world needs to know. As we see the end coming, and so much of the world is asleep, not understand, understanding the things that are happening almost daily. Do not allow us to be numbered among the ignorant, but number, numbers among those who you are blessed with knowledge in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. We thank you for that which you have blessed us with today. Continue to be with us even tonight. Father God, your children who are gathered up to you wherever tonight, and they are going to be crying out to you in fellowship in night vision. Father, may you hear their prayers in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, do not allow Satan and his forces to ever confuse us concerning your word.
Do not allow us to believe the lie. Do not allow us to take on any error or heresies or blasphemies in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Fight the battle of life for us, Lord, that we may make rapture when the time comes in the mighty name of Jesus. And while we are waiting for it, Father, bless us in all the endeavors of our lives, be they spiritual or material, financial or economic, whatever it is, even in our health. Father, bless us and bless us miraculously to you, miraculously to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Do not allow that, that Satan will be able to lead us away from you at any moment in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered our prayers. Blessed be the Holy Name, for in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Receive the priestly blessing. The Lord keep you. Let his face shine upon you and be precious unto you. Then lift his countenance upon you. God bless you, his children, his present peace. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.